Recording has started. It's uh, Thursday, October 21st. All right, so uh, speaking last night, how I want to finish off this week, because I, I know so far this, uh, this week, uh, I give you guys notes on energy power, and we went through a ton of examples, and uh, I, I was originally going to do textbook prompts with you guys today, but I figure uh, some of you guys probably need to get up and work with your friends in the lab area, so that's what we're doing today. So today's going to be mechanical advanced lab, and tomorrow we'll tug through as many textbook problems as, uh, as we can get through. And so mechanical advantage, uh, I've got an example pulley system here. There's also uh, a live uh, version in class, you can see right here. So the, the one you can see in class, uh, let me turn my camera just for the, the video on this, okay, is, is a five to one mechanical advantage system. Uh, do you guys see, here, you guys see these two weights? Uh, there's one on the side of the spring scale and there's this big one here. Notice how, ooh, that little tiny weight is actually pulling down and the big one's being lifted up. How is that possible? How can a small force lift up a big force? How can you do that? Well, if you know how to rig up this, these pulleys and strings, uh, you can do this. Right? So, uh, do you guys notice that of these pulleys, you guys see the, the red pulleys, right? The, uh, the top two are fixed in place, like they have fixed axes, they're not moving. But the bottom one, ooh, that's a movable pulley. That was moving up and down with the uh, with the large weight. Like that. Huh. Uh, also, compare the distances that the spring scale moves versus the, the big weight moves. Right? Maybe I can call this like input force, like if I'm pulling on this side, versus output force, the one that's actually being lifted. So input force versus output force. Uh, and, and, and also distances. So I'm comparing forces and distances. So this one kilogram mass weighs about 10 newtons, but the force reading on this brown scale is only about two newtons. Hey, isn't that a five to one ratio? Right? Uh, and if you look really close, if you guys get a close look at this later, there's actually five strings going up from this movable pulley. Oh, so it's kind of like the weight got split five ways, isn't it? And then the tension in each string is one fifth of this whole weight. And that's what translates over to the, the input side. So, oh, so it's one fifth of the force. But compare those distances that they move. See how the spring scale moves a very long distance versus the big weight only moves a tiny distance at a time? Ah, that's how you're paying for this mechanical advantage. So you can get super strength. Uh, but you don't get uh, like amplified energy from that. Oh, uh, what do you think the ratio of those distances also was? The ratio of the forces, uh, output versus input, was a five to one ratio. What do you think the ratio of those distances probably was? I think it's probably also a five to one ratio, just the opposite way. Right? Like if you held up a couple of rulers next to those, you could say like, ooh, uh, I pulled down like uh, 10 centimeters and the big weight only moved up two centimeters. It, that would probably be, uh, be the ratio, right? So here's uh, how this ties to uh, conservation of energy that we've been doing over the last few days. So energy is conserved, right? You can amplify your strength with a, uh, a simple machine. The, uh, a pulley system is one example of a simple machine. There's also levers, there's gear systems, or, so other types uh, of screws, sometimes things considered a, a simple machine. Uh, but the energy input, uh, well, that, that's uh, all the energy you can get for what you get for the output. Like the output can't be more than the input. Uh, if you had 100% efficiency, that they would be equal. So the work that you put in is equal to the work that you get out. And in this context, work is force times distance, right? Maybe you put a force and you pull down some distance on the spring scale, and that causes a weight to move up some distance, like some height change. Ah, yeah, so input um, work equals output work, right? Uh, now, I'm going to give you guys a uh, lab page that looks like uh, this, but we only got a few dollars left in my print budget this month, so you guys are going to have to share these so you can put several names on the paper. And this uh, lab is in four parts. It's a create a one-to-one -one mechanical advantage system, uh, a two-to-one mechanical advantage system, a three-to-one mechanical advantage, and a four-to-one mechanical advantage. So that ratio, one-to-one, two-to-one, three-to-one, four-to-one, uh, well, it, it could be one of two different things. So let me show you guys the two perspectives. Uh, there's what's called ideal mechanical advantage and then real mechanical advantage. Ideal mechanical advantage, you compare the distances. So distance in compared to distance out. Right? Uh, and so just by measuring length of string, maybe in centimeters, right? and then the ratio of those might be, like this system would be a three to one mechanical advantage, and you could determine that from the ratios of those distances maybe. But then there's the actual mechanical advantage, the real mechanical advantage, which is the ratios of the forces. So force out versus force in, which should also be the same ratio. Uh, but uh, 
what, why would why might this uh, not be exactly the same as the ideal mechanical advantage? Maybe because the pulleys might have a little bit of friction. Maybe something to do with the trigonometry of what if these strings are exactly vertical. Uh, maybe things like that, right? So it might be a little bit of a lossy process. In fact, if you want to calculate efficiency, it's just the ratio of those mechanical advantages. Uh, so it might be like uh, like ninety two percent efficient. Like once you take the ratio, something like that. Okay, and so, okay, so far. Right. So when you guys are uh, in your groups today, you zoom in. Uh, all the guys out. The, the first one, one-on-one -on -one mechanical advantage is well, you're not really getting in advantage, advantage, right? You're not amplifying your strength. You might reroute the direction of the force. Maybe that could be helpful. Uh, I can show you one example of how you might do that. So, uh, what if you had a, a fixed pulley and you threw a string around it, and then you got a weight on one side, and you've got a spring scale on the other side. Oops. Right, spring scale that's measuring right. that could be a one one mechanical advantage, right? However far you pull down, it's going to pull up, but the forces are, are, are the same. Right. Uh, record some numbers. What's the weight that you use now, guys? What's the unit for weight? Newtons. Oh, and then what's the force reading that you are pulling on the other side, which would also be in Newtons? Right. Uh, looking at this table, I, I should have organized this table a little, a little bit different. I'll probably go edit that in my papers. Uh, what's the height change of the weight? Um, maybe in like some number of centimeters. And what's the length that you pulled in maybe some number of centimeters? And then ah, ideal and actual mechanical advantage. Well, I'm going to leave this page up on the projection over the course of the uh, class so that you can see those definitions. Right? Uh, uh, you guys okay so far? Right. A quick way to figure out what the mechanical advantage is is to look at the movable pulley, right, the one that's moving, right, and see like, well, if there's one weight pulling down, how many strings are pulling up? Like in this case, you guys see three. Kind of like the weight gets split three different ways, isn't it? Right? So uh, your guys' uh, challenge today is to say, can you construct each uh, of these mechanical advantages? And can you make the measurements and calculate the uh, ideal and uh, real uh, mechanical advantages? Right? 